All right, y'all, let's get into this video, man. Today, we're going to be reacting to Jeffrey Dahmer's bizarre body language. Shows that the truth isn't always right. So let's get into the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell the angel mama to tell the Uncle Joey. Still a whole get right into the video. Man, let's get it. I have not watched the Netflix um, documentary yet, but I need to watch it. I love watching the shit about Jeffrey Dahmer. It's just so interesting. Okay, now before I begin into the actual analysis, I'll give you a quick crash course of Jeffrey Dahmer, where he came from, and, you know, just a little bit of the events. Lead. We know what happened with Dahmer. Up to Should I skip it, y'all? This here interview that occurred. Comment down below, should I skip this part or not? So, Jeffrey Dahmer was a serial killer from America who took the lives of 17 men between it's the crazy. years of 1978 and... And you know what's crazy? It was probably more than 17 that he just did not ever say anything about. You know, it was probably 25, 35, we don't even know. 1991. His childhood was what would be considered happy and average until a personality shift occurred centered around a surgery, more or less. Noticeably really? more subdued than before, he became increasingly withdrawn following the birth of his brother and his family's frequent moves. Mm. By the time he had reached his early teenage years, he was disengaged, tense, and had very few friends, if any. It was during that time that Dahmer reported first feeling his sinister cravings. Alcoholism controlled his young adult life as he dropped out of college and enlisted in the military. It was in the year of 1978 that he claimed his first victim. Over mm -hmm. the next 13 years, Dahmer sought out men at bars, malls, and bus stops, lured them home, gave them laced alcoholic beverages before fatally strangling them. He would then engage in inappropriate and explicit acts with them before dismembering and disposing of them. However, he would often keep specific parts of them as souvenirs. Along with this, he would also take photos of his victims at various stages in his process so he could revel in his prior acts. One late night in 1991, one of Dahmer's victims escaped his captivity and flagged down a police car. He then led the Damn. cops back to Dahmer's apartment. They found photos of his victims Damn. as well as some of their parts in the refrigerator and freezer. Caught in the act and with over. Thank God, because this nigga here would have still been on the loose, killing hella niggas, bro. Like, what? Plus some of their parts in the refrigerator and freezer. Caught in the act and with overwhelming physical evidence against him, Dahmer obviously confessed. Right. In 1992, <laughs> Dahmer entered a guilty but insane plea. However, a jury almost unanimously found him to be sane mm -hmm. in each incident. He's just a sicko psycho. Sentenced over one dozen consecutive life sentences, but was killed in prison in 1994 by another inmate who was mm -hmm. alleged to have used either a he wasn't playing that shit and or a stolen metal bar from the prison gym to beat Dahmer until he was nearly dead. Dahmer was pronounced dead on the way to the hospital mm. due to multiple skull fractures and Tough. severe brain trauma. Karma. So that's your story. Let's go ahead and start into this actual analysis itself. All Let's right. see what the nonverbal communication is of one of the most well-known serial killers in history. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts wanting to control them, to, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, possess them permanently. Okay. okay, so something that I will point out about Dahmer's nonverbal baseline is that he has a very subdued tone and very subdued nonverbal baseline as well. So that comes into play here and there as we can see him process through various things, but he regularly has halts in his phrasing as he tries to carefully plan out and think mm. out his words. And he is not a very dynamic person mm -hmm. non-verbally either. He doesn't mm -hmm. have a lot of fidgeting or broad movements. So if we're looking for anything that strays from that to give us any red flags, this one's a pretty clean cut, straightforward case, mm -hmm. but there is still stuff to be able to learn from each incident where a person thinks or processes differently than the normal average population. Mm -hmm. There's hopefully something that we could still learn. Mm -hmm. So let's continue forward. All right. That's why you killed them. Right. Right. Not because I was angry with them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. And uh, as my obsession grew... So that <laughs> actually does seem to line up non-verbally. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You sound fucking nuts. It definitely seemed very genuine and authentic. They're synchronized all the way throughout. <laughs> there are no other anomalies that are happening besides this. this. That's pretty wild, guys. Like, 
When you think about your experiences, I'm pretty sure we've all been with somebody to at one point we felt like, damn, I can't live without this person or damn, like I'm going to be really, really sad if this person leaves or whatever happens, right? But to go to the extent of killing the person so you could keep them with you, body parts and all, like fucking dental records and everything, that shit is wild. That's next level. Soothing gesture. <laughs> placating gesture would almost be a way to put it that he's doing with his hand off to the side and that's a similar gesture to the hey now i'm explaining something back off i'm a little bit defensive about it but this is the reason for that whole line of thinking so that comes out there as well mm -hmm. so far though he seems very nonchalant in mm -hmm. his actions and i'll talk a little bit about what i was able to perceive from his psychological state mm -hmm. and then you know we'll wrap up the video let's continue okay He was saving body parts such as uh, skulls and uh, skeletons. It's a process. It doesn't happen. So building up to that, he was doing a little no shake in there, and that would be related to the, I don't Probably know. the guilt, because he, you know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is weird. No, I, I don't know. And that's where that no comes in there. I don't know. I did blah, blah, blah. So that comes in. And then after he mentions the parts that he was saving, he does lip compressions after each one. Those are interesting. Those are usually related to negative thoughts or when a person's saying something that they know that they shouldn't, something along those lines, you'll see a lip compression crop up. There are many reasons for a lip compression. These mm -hmm. are the ones that make sense in context. Mm -hmm. So with that, he is cognizantly aware of the fact that what he does was not right. done was very wrong. Mm. And that's showing in his nonverbal communication. Mm -hmm. But what we're not seeing are any signs of shame or guilt during that. No. As well. So true psycho. Overnight, uh, when you uh, depersonalize another person and view them as just an object. An object, right. Uh, an object for pleasure instead of a, a living, breathing human being. Uh, it, it seems to make it easier. Psycho slash narcissist. Do things you shouldn't do. Okay, so during this time, we can see that Swallow's in there. His mouth is getting a little bit dry down. while he's speaking about his actual murders. And this is interesting because that response indicates nerves. It indicates agitation. Mm -hmm. So there's some sort of psychological processing that he is doing around that that mm -hmm. isn't a positive one. It's prepping him for the fight or flight reaction. Mm. So there's something going on there. Mm -hmm. It's not guilt, but it is at least <clears throat> concern or maybe worry. Discomfort. Would it be about getting caught? Yeah, more likely than not, but it's not guilt. He's still not showing any indicators <laughs> of shame in there. And then here where I have it paused Damn, now, Jeff. he has a pretty substantial lip compression that's in there, and that's still related to what I explained earlier. So what I'm seeing from Dahmer is that he is aware of how wrong he mm -hmm. was and how bad his actions were, mm -hmm. but he didn't, it's, it's almost like he just didn't care. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. You do sound, though, like the kind of person who could have said to himself, this is wrong, I must stop. I always knew that, that it was wrong, but uh, uh, after the, the first, the first uh, killing... It does seem like he is uh, thinking about what he's about to say, too, though. I knew that, that it was wrong, but uh, uh, after the, the first... The first uh, killing was not planned. So you can hear him having some of those psychophysiological things come in with the increased breathing. That's another sign of agitation or nerves. And he also has that extended, I always knew it was wrong, which many of us would see that as bored. And that's still the brain needing oxygen in a different way. That sigh is called in from that side of things but he's still disconnected from it emotionally. Mm -hmm. And this obviously pushes us to believe that he's either a psychopath or a mm -hmm. sociopath, and I'm mm -hmm. not a psychologist, so I'm not diagnosed <laughs> right. here. But that's why people believe that. That's why they see him as such, because of this emotional disconnect mm -hmm. from what he's talking about. I'm here to really affirm that he's not feeling an emotional connection to it. It's mm -hmm. not leaking out in any form or fashion mm -hmm. at all. His channels are revealing other things, his emotional state in regards to anxiety or nerves or stress, mm -hmm. but nothing in regards to empathy or 
guilt or shame. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. I was uh, coming back from the shopping mall back in 78. I had had uh, fantasies about picking up a, a hitchhiker mm -hmm. and uh, taking him back to the house and uh, having complete control and dominance over him. I mean, you could have took this the dominatrix route. Maybe you could have done some type of fetish thing. But this nigga had to go to the extent of killing these niggas so they would never leave. That's a whole different level of domination and control, fam. That's some Hitler shit. No one, no one had a clue as to what was happening for, for over a decade. Just oblivious. What happened to you Damn. in the nine years in between that you were able to stop? That you were able to control yourself? It just wasn't an opportunity to uh, fully express what I wanted to, to do. There was just not the, op the physical opportunity to do it then. So something that I will note about Dahmer that is more chilling is that he doesn't feel like he's putting on a show for attention. Mm -hmm. In many cases, when you watch some of these interviews with mm -hmm. serial killers or people who have done atrocious things, mm -hmm. they have this complex, it seems, about them where they're asking for attention mm -hmm. and they're really hamming up their side of things mm -hmm. a lot trying to make Fact. themselves sound creepier or mm -hmm. crueler or more evil or like they've killed thousands of people and shit to garnish <laughs> more of that attention right jeffrey doesn't do anything like that right he's, he's simply stating facts mm -hmm. it seems from his side of things where to mm -hmm. us it's atrocious and mm -hmm. horrifying atrocious. what he's done and what he was saying that he would even continue to do mm -hmm. For him, it sounds like he's listing a grocery list, and emotionally <laughs> speaking, that's all it's pegging in his mind as well as something Yo. as arbitrary as that. He said grocery list. Very days. fascinating. Yeah. And uh, I started, when I moved to Milwaukee in 81, uh, I started reading pornography, going to the bookstores. Um, eventually that led to uh, frequenting the gay bars and then I one time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room the ambassador hotel uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him I had no intention of hurting him when I woke up in the morning he uh, had a broken rib here I was heavily bruised apparently I had uh, beaten them to death with my fists. Yeah, apparently, huh? no memory. I So something that I am noticing that is interesting about Dahmer is that when he's starting to say something that he did that was perhaps seen as more controversial or gruesome and, and brutal, mm -hmm. he locks eye contact with who he's speaking Damn. to. Damn. Almost to see what their response is. And this isn't uncommon for serial killers to want to receive that sort of attention mm. from the people around them. They know that they have done terrible things mm -hmm. and they want to be able to see those reactions in people. Dahmer's thing was all about dominance and having control mm -hmm. and being able to see those emotional responses in the people that he's speaking to now mm -hmm. is likely part of what encouraged him to be so forthcoming with what he had done. Mm. He knew he was caught. Mm -hmm. He had no hope to get out of any of his sentences now, mm -hmm. but he did have this way of still adding shock value to the people <laughs> that he spoke to, still lending him the emotional and psychological hand of dominance. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. That's crazy. It's something that I have just noticed popping up around his, his whole recollection of things. Let's continue. Yeah, no memory of it. But that's what started the whole spree all over again. When you killed these men, afterwards, were you repulsed? <laughs> were you upset? No, it, at the time, uh, it, was, it was almost addictive. It was almost uh, a surge of energy. Uh, I wouldn't have to uh, worry about... Uh, any of their needs or anything. I just had complete control of the situation. Mm -hmm. Why did you photograph them? <laughs> He's still being very authentic here. So far, mm -hmm. from what I've seen, and it's difficult to say, especially if somebody is possibly sociopathic or psychopathic, mm -hmm. to be able to see genuine, authentic body language mm -hmm. is a little bit more difficult. I think that's what is the most fascinating thing about Jeffrey Dahmer, and I feel like that's why a lot of people like to keep up with his story and watch his old interviews and just... They're just so fascinated. Well, I am i can only speak from my perspective. I am so fascinated by the fact that this nigga here really shows no remorse 
and he's just telling you what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what happened. He's not trying to over-exaggerate it. He's not trying to, like, minimize what he's done either. He's just telling you straight up what it is, and you can tell he's being genuine. Let me know how y'all feel. As we've all kind of heard. So, from what I can see, it seems like he's being very authentic here. Does he have the ability to lie? And lie? Well, <laughs> right, I have of no course. Doubt. Do I think he's doing so here? No, but let's continue. It was my way of remembering uh, their appearance, their physical beauty. Uh, I also wanted to keep something. If I couldn't keep them there with me whole, I, at least I felt that I could keep uh, their body the skeletons. She's weird. And uh, <laughs> I even went weird. so far as planning on uh, setting up an altar <laughs> with uh, the... Uh, Ten different uh, skulls and skeletons. And what was the purpose of the altar going to be? Uh, as a sort of uh, memorial. It's just so fascinating to me. It is. <laughs> it really is. So Dahmer's obviously a very dark human being. Mm -hmm. His psyche's very dark. Yeah. But to watch him speak of what he's speaking of mm -hmm. and how he's doing it, his nonverbal communication is fully authentic. Mm -hmm. He's being very authentic from what I can see here, mm -hmm. even down to the smaller movements that are giving away like various emotional things. None of them are lending towards deception. It's not mm -hmm. a desynchronized leakage. It's just him really amplifying what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And either one, he's consciously doing this, which is possible, or he's really genuinely being authentic here in what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And his disconnect between a person and their lives and mm -hmm. who they are as a human being is incredible. He has fully disconnected in his mind mm -hmm. what they are. They're, mm -hmm. they're now something else. They're not, they're not people. Mm -hmm. They're a material, an object. Mm -hmm. And he, he mentions that that's what he had to do or attempted to do to make things easier, which would lend us to believe that he was trying to say that it was difficult. I, I don't know on that one yet. <laughs> Let's keep watching. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a point where I could... I don't know. It's, it's, it's so bizarre and strange, it's hard to describe. A place where I could collect my thoughts uh, and feed my obsession. When the bodies were still in your apartment, there was no time when you would see them and say, this is grotesque. Mm -mm, oh, obviously not. Look at how there he's talking about it. Oh, he did? Oh. Grotesque. What have I done? There were times. Mm. There were times, but a compulsive obsession with uh, doing whatever. Watching the corner of his mouth during that time where he's saying there were times, there were times. Mm -hmm. It starts to creep upwards lightly. This is a sign of contempt, moral, or intellectual superiority. I don't believe that Dahmer has any level of moral superiority. Of course not. He could still see himself as having such, or just the intellectual superiority of it. Regardless, that really falls in line with Dahmer, this superiority, domination. Thing. I'm just surprised that he actually admitted that he sometimes would think about how grotesque and, and disgusting and sick this was. He said sometimes. If that makes sense. That's crazy. It was doing overpowered any feelings of revulsion. Before you went out to pick up the man, was there any kind of ritual you went through? I'd go to the nightclubs, uh, drink, watch the, uh, the strip tea shows. And uh, if I didn't meet anyone at the bars, I'd... Uh, go to the bath clubs and uh, meet, meet someone there, offer them money, and we'd go back to the apartment. And you kill them. Uh, <laughs> have a few drinks. I'd have the, uh, the uh, sleeping pill mixture already prepared. The person would drink it, fall asleep, and uh, that's when they would be strangled. And I felt so hopelessly I wonder if all of his murders, and maybe he spoke on this, if he has, let me know in the comment section down below, but I wonder if he has ever murdered anyone sober. Like, I'm wondering if alcohol was the trigger. 
Because they always talk about he had an alcohol addiction, he had a problem with alcohol. I wonder if alcohol was not in the equation, would he have had the capability to hold back on some of these murders, if not all? Uh, evil and perverted. That, uh, that I, I actually derives a sort of pleasure from watching that tape. Did you like feeling evil? So what I'm watching for in this area as he's talking about these things is to see if there are any micro or mini expressions of disgust slipping into his baseline to see perhaps maybe he does feel some disgust at least towards the actions that he's done. Mm -hmm. So he's saying verbally that he felt so mm -hmm. evil and perverted mm -hmm. that he enjoyed watching and I think it was The Exorcist 3 was the tape that he's referring to here. Mm -hmm. But I'm not seeing that reflected elsewhere for a little bit. He does a pretty substantial and large lip compression and furrows his eyebrows and closes his eyes all mm. in one deal. And that would be considered a grimace. That's the closest that I can <laughs> see towards disgust, towards his actions. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, he doesn't seem to have any negative repercussions in his psychology about his actions. Mm -hmm. it's still just very, it's different, it's different. No, no, I didn't, but uh, I tried to overcome the thoughts, and it worked for a while, but eventually I gave in. Do you still feel those same urges? Do you still feel that compulsion, that obsession? Uh, I wish I could say that uh, it just left completely, but uh, no, there are times when I still do still do have uh, the old compulsions. I started having these obsessive thoughts uh, when I was a... I'm not so certain that he wishes they were gone or that they're the old compulsions. It seems as though he <laughs> really does still feel them, and I don't know that they're considered... I don't know. I don't know what his scale is of old compulsions, is what I'm saying. Is that it, it, if he's still feeling them, then they're not the old compulsions. They're just not able to be enacted on. Mm -hmm. So I just found that word... Mm -hmm. choice that he had there interesting mm -hmm. but I, I don't think that they're in any way behind him I think mm -hmm. well now obviously but at this point I don't think they were anywhere near behind him so mm -hmm. let's continue it was about uh, 15 and 16 and they got worse and worse what were your fantasies about? Uh, they were sexual pleasure all mixed together I was uh, branching out that's when the cannibalism started eating of the heart. It's disgusting. And uh, the, the heart muscle. <laughs> that is disgusting. It was a way of uh, making... It's a whole sure. new... It gives a whole new meaning to eat your heart out. Uh, the heart infection. I kept the... Uh... It's interesting. Something else that... So I guess the alcohol question is out of the question because, yeah, he would have still done it, alcohol or not, it sounds like. The... Uh... It's interesting. Something else that... Dahmer does is he never tries to shift his blame to anyone mm -hmm. else. He's not a victim right. in his storyline. Mm -hmm. He owns that shit. He takes almost pride in him doing what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's a fascinating aspect of it, which sometimes you can see somebody as a serial killer or a murderer or even just a criminal of any level mm -hmm. having a reason for where they are now, if that makes sense. But he doesn't he doesn't oh, do that. Right. That's yeah, that is really interesting that he brought that up. Because I was going to say at the end of this video, but I'll address it here because he's speaking about it. I was going to say that he fully owns this shit. He's not blaming it on his childhood, how he was raised. He's not blaming it on not feeling love or, or you know, whatever it was in his childhood. Um, he's not blaming it on anything. He's fully owning this shit. He's basically saying this is what happened i did it and yeah sometimes i might feel you know disgust but overall like my urge overpowered that and so for him to actually like take the blame in the way that he's doing is is really like he said it's fascinating bro that's what makes him so fascinating fascinating facet of of Dahmer's mind how he thought and how he perceived the world and for him to take borderline pride in what he was doing is just adding another level of I don't know sinister value to him it it's 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 a lot right the mummified uh, head and skull of one of the victims in uh, a, a 
carrying case in my locker at work. Were you almost <laughs> flaunting? It's fucking nuts. Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. Is there any kind of incident that you can remember? So he keeps using the words compulsion, mm -hmm. and any time that he describes his acts, except for a few choice areas, he uses words like bizarre or strange instead of dark or twisted, something along those lines. <laughs> and I don't know if this is him trying to minimize to validate it in his own mind, the things that he did, and make it to where it's not as severe, but it, it's just, he's complex. He's arguably very, very complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we can talk a little bit more later. Mm -hmm. To this day, I don't know what started it. And uh, the person to blame is sitting right across from you. That's the only person. Mm. Not uh, I love parents, it. not society, not pornography. And I feel like that's why he, like, even though he is, he was a disgusting human being, a disgusting psycho, and, and deserved everything he had coming to him, even though that's the case, I still have a level of respect for him for being so authentic, being so genuine, and 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 fully taking responsibility and holding himself accountable for his actions. You know what I'm saying? We can't even get some women to do that. You feel me? Uh, some men too. But this is a whole serial killer, bro. And he is actually owning that shit. It's crazy. Like you have to respect I mean, those that. Are just least. excuses. What was the turning point for you? that made you suddenly realize that you had done something terribly wrong, something you should be sorry for? It was uh, the night of the arrest. I have no memory of what happened uh, during the six hours before uh, the last victim ran out of the apartment. Mm -hmm. I heard a knock on the door, mm -hmm. and the police were there uh, with, with the last victim. Boy, I know he regret that shit, boy. And I know that, I wonder where the last victim is nowadays. Let me know if y'all heard. But being that last victim, I know he was like, damn, this is fucking nuts, bro. Probably PTSD still to this day if he's still alive. Uh, they asked me where the key was to the handcuffs. I was, my mind was in a haze. I sort of pointed to the bedroom. And that's where they uh, found, found the pictures. Everything. And they, they yelled, cuff him. I was handcuffed, and uh, it, it was just the realization that there was no point in trying to hide, no getting out. hide uh, my actions anymore. Yeah. The, the best route was to... Micro head movements, no, during that entire recollection period there, indicate authenticity, just because they are synchronized with the words that he's saying. He's still telling the truth. To help help the police identify all the victims and just uh, make a complete confession. Ten of your 17 victims were black. Were uh, they racially motivated? It, it was not racially motivated. It was not a sexual preference. It was just to find an obsession with uh, the best looking young man I could find. There was no use trying to fight it because I, I couldn't rid myself of it. So when he's responding to the racial, the racial question there, he says it was not, and that's the first time that he uses that sort of prolonged and emphasized wording, mm -hmm. it was not, and said it wasn't. Mm -hmm. He has been using contractions pretty regularly throughout the rest of this with his verbal patterns. So to have it, it was not, that means that he's really trying to emphasize mm. that. So looking at that, I would have liked to be able to see what he was doing during that time while he was saying that to see if there's a desynchronization. Mm -hmm. Because all that I can say from his words is that he really wanted to emphasize that. Mm -hmm. I'd have to ask why did he really want to emphasize that over mm -hmm. anything else. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure why. Besides, maybe he that's his line. That's his line is that this wasn't a racial thing. He's a horrible human being, but he's not a racist. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. Let's keep watching. It was... It was too powerful and persistent. Do you dislike it? Yes, it's caused uh, a lot of problems for me. A lot of conflicts and uh, unanswered questions. If you were out on the street now, would you still be committing the crimes? Probably. If this hadn't happened, oh, yeah. there's no doubt I probably Thanks. would be. I can't think of anything that would have stopped me. Okay, so that's, that's the interview done in 1993 within the next 365 days he was 
murdered in prison. So that is Jeffrey Dahmer looking back through this and also considering the other footage that I went through to be able to help study and prepare for this. I do believe that he had a severe psychological disconnect between what his actions were and the emotions that they ought to invoke. He felt no displayable shame during all of that. There was nothing to indicate that level of emotion. He did have plenty of false starts. He had a dry mouth. He had plenty of breathing shifts to where his breathing would become more fluttery or less fluttery. He had a lot of swallows in there and <laughs> lip compressions and the list goes on, all related to nerves and agitation, a negative emotion to be sure, but not guilt. I don't believe that Dahmer ever felt genuinely guilty for what he mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. at least to what you and I would probably feel. <laughs> this was interesting to me. I think that I could probably spend most of the rest of my career studying people like Dahmer mm -hmm. and finding out more and more and more about how nonverbal communication portrays over severe cases like this. Where the Y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comment section down below. We know Dahmer is just, he was a very fascinating individual. The only thing that I kept thinking in my head is this nigga's nuts, bro. This nigga is nuts and he doesn't care that he's nuts. Rest in peace to the victims and the victims' families that were affected by, you know, um, his killings. So let me know how y'all feel in the comment section down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of that. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell the angel mama to tell the uncle Joey still a hoe. See you guys in the next. Motherfucking video, I love y'all, man. Peace. We out, baby.